Hey everyone, Ray Sawville, RaySawville.com. In today's video, we are going to be going through Facebook forms, how you can create them for your page, and then how you can go about using them in your Facebook advertising strategy. It's a pretty simple process that is pretty impactful depending on how you set it up. So make sure to stick along and ask some questions if you have them. Facebook forms are an all-in-one solution that are all done through Facebook.com and you're able to place a form fill directly on Facebook that users can then fill out and you capture their information. Think of it like a form fill on your website, but instead of it being on your site, it's on Facebook. Easy, right? So in order to get this going, all you have to do is go over to Facebook, head to your Facebook page, and then you're going to notice publishing tools in your page settings menu. So go to publishing tools. Once you get to this page, you're going to notice on the left-hand menu that there's a form library section. And this is essentially where most of your forms live. And then you're able to edit and change and create things on the fly. You'll notice that you'll be able to create a new form here or duplicate one that you have already that that's out there. Right now for this account, I don't have a form created right now. So I'm just going to be making one from scratch. So I'm going to go next. And then I'm going to label this form as dummy form one. And there are two options here, more volume or higher intent. Now, Facebook forms for the most part tend to be a little bit higher funnel. And from a lead quality standpoint, they tend to get a lot of volume, but the quality may not be as high just because users that are inputting their information, the, the information is autofilled directly on Facebook where the form does fill out that information for them. And depending on where they're at, it, they may not have as much intent. So depending on your business or your client, you may want to mess around with these two options if you're noticing that your lead volume is different. So normally when I'm running Facebook lead ads off the start, I tend to start with the more volume option. And then if, if I'm noticing that the intent or the quality of the lead may be a little bit lower, what I tend to do is then switch to the higher intent option. So just, just start with one of these, um, see how they go, and you can always pivot over time. The intro section here is you're able to um, upload just a standard image and use that, or you can use an image from an ad. And the reason why this option is really nice is because then it becomes dynamic and then this image will always update based on whatever ad copy you use. So the reason why this op option is nice is because you don't always have the same image. You're able to rotate things in and out. So I, I typically like to use the image from your ad option. The headline, I may say, um, download our free white paper on the best Mulch. And then you're able to put in some information. So I can do like a list of information if I want, or I can do like, um, you know, very basic information, or I can go paragraph style to let them know like what they can expect when downloading this information. So I can, you know, I can say, um, so I threw in some pretty standard uh, promotional messaging. So you can throw this in and see what it looks like on the right hand side when you're previewing this. Um, and then you're able to get down to the questions. So there are some very standard questions where you can say uh, multiple choice, short answer, conditional. You can even have appointments requested through this, which is pretty nice. Um, by default, there are pre-fill questions. So you can get things like name, email, phone number, address. You can get anything that people have on Facebook. And then if they give Facebook that information, it's going to autofill, which is pretty nice. So that's one thing to call out there. Um, one note, the more information you require on here, in my experience, the less chance you have of somebody filling it out. So I would recommend to do the bare minimum here that is most impactful for your business. So normally things like name, email, and phone number are more than enough, depending on how you would like to use it. Um, I'm, I'm going to come back to this custom question section that I highlighted here just a few seconds ago. One of the key parts is the privacy policy. You need to make sure your website has a privacy policy in order to run lead ads. You need to make sure that all of the information that you are collecting does follow um, proper guidelines, Facebook's uh, disclaimers, um, potentially, uh, you know, GDPR things or CCPA. So there's a bunch of different things you have to consider when doing this. So just keep that in mind. And then what happens at the end of the form? So what happens once they download and they submit their information? You can direct them to a website. You can direct them to a download. Um, there's several different call to actions that you can do here. So you can do just a, a plain old phone call if you want to go that route. Um, but before we do that, I did want to go through some use cases here for custom uh, questions. And one of the things I like to use the most are multiple choice questions. And the reason why these are nice is you can say, what is your favorite kind of mulch? And then you can say things like um, dark brown, red mulch, or my favorite, blue mulch. Not really. Um, but what happens is it adds a custom form to this field. So if you do want to capture this for your CRM, where you want to categorize the information in a specific way, you can then download this information when you are done 
export it, upload it to like MailChimp or Constant Contact and make sure you have like an email file that is really well organized and then you're able to hit those users with, you know, a very tailored message. So keep, keep this in mind with that type of question. The other option is you can do things obviously like short answers or conditional, if this, then that type of thing or requesting an appointment. So mess around with some of those options. But like I said, the more information you require a user to fill out, the less likelihood of them doing it. So just keep that in mind when doing it. Uh, when that is all done, you can then publish. I'm going to save it as a draft right now just because um, I, I don't want to publish this at this point. And that's about it when creating Facebook forms on the platform. It's a pretty straightforward process that allows you to capture information very quickly in a very high impact way. So consider that when building these out. You also do have the option to target these users with lead ads on Facebook. So now that you have this form created, you can now put some money behind this, target your ideal audience with this form to really like pour some leads into your funnel. So if that's something that you're interested in, I do have a video on this channel for Facebook lead ads. There'll be a link in the upper right-hand corner. So make sure to check that out. And that's it for today's video. If you guys have any questions, make sure to let me know below in the comments. Um, one other note, if you did enjoy this content and did find it helpful, please consider subscribing. Right now, only about 3% to 4% of the users that are watching this content are subscribed. The reason why that would be helpful is that it'll help the YouTube algorithm recommend this video to people that are just like you. So I'd really appreciate that. And thank you very much. Until next time, see you later. Bye.